Welcome to the beginning of series 46, everyone. We are bending the rules a little bit this series, but before we get to all of that, first, announcements! Woo! First announcements of 2022, everybody! Woo! Welcome! 2022. Welcome to 2022! Happy New Year! We made it through 2021 somehow! Uh, and I know uh, a lot of people uh, are, are ready to take on 2022, myself included. Uh, you know, grab it by the horns and and attack it before it gets us, I guess. Um, <laughs> get, get, get 2022 <laughs> before it gets you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a very good energy, isn't it? That's true. That is a good... I, I strive to that energy, right? I, <laughs> I hope to someday to feel that strongly of like, I'm going to get it before it gets me. <laughs> exactly. We got to become the predators. <laughs> <laughs> I want a little soundbite of that of Ryan being like, we gotta become the predators. It's like the only time in his life he's ever gonna say it. <laughs> I'm all for it. 2022. I'm changed. In 2022, the year of the predator. The year of the predator. Uh, with our thermal vision. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know those movies? Come on. I don't think I've ever seen them, actually. Oh, that's what from a while ago. Uh. Well, uh, we, we have some plans already in motion uh, that I think we're, our audience is going to like. We um, do. One thing that we have coming out soon is a new episode zero. Oh, yeah, I do uh, remember that. <laughs> I was like, plans, yeah, we what did. plans? <laughs> we did. We re-recorded our episode zero uh, to replace the old one because, oh, my gosh, that old one. It was uh, painful. It was painful. Like, we both listened to it and we're like, ooh, I'd like this to not be out in the world anymore. Yes, no, thank you. So we tripled it in length. <laughs> and it's, it's a bit longer. We do have some commentary in there. Uh, it's the same base content of what yeah. it used to be. But, you know, it's 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 more uh, of us talking with one another instead of reading off of a, a thing that we had prepared ahead of time. Yeah, we definitely have more chemistry than we used to when we originally made it. And so I think that shines through. It makes it a little bit longer, but yeah. it's still, I think, still worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then if I have time, I want to remaster series one through three. Um, and I might be able to get to that by February, maybe Ooh. even March. We'll see. And uh, we've got some bonus content that will be coming up uh, sometime soon that we'll uh, hopefully be able to record soon. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be uh, out there. And my goodness, we, we are excited for the possibilities this year. Yeah, I think that we've got a lot of ideas of things that we want to do. Hopefully now that the holidays are over, it'll give us a little time to kind of sink our teeth into some of those things that we're, mm -hmm. that we're excited, that we've been excited about for a while. Yeah. Um, hopefully now we are all like used to pandemic living enough that like we're not like, uh, just hanging on by the skin of our teeth. I know. Um, so, I mean, that's my big hope for 2022, I think, is just the like... I can finally be like, all right, we're just going to live it up. Yeah. Like, in spite you know, of everything, we, we persevere. Right, right. Like, I'm going to stop, waiting for, <laughs> stop mm -hmm. waiting for things, like, waiting for it to go back to normal. Exactly. Um, we are busy planning our next recordings. We are excited to get to them soon. Um, we also have our 50th series coming up in a few months, which is yeah. really exciting. I can't believe that, like... Where, I mean, when we started the show, we knew that we certainly had plenty of content. We were not concerned at all of like, oh, do you think we'll make it? Um, we're not sure what we want Series 50 to be, but mm -hmm. we're really excited to make it something special. Um, yeah. I think that it's going to be our own game that we wrote called Legends of the Heroes Unlimited. <laughs> and... Oh. Um, I mean, Rifts is a very good contender for, for no. Series 50. no. No, no, I want it to be our okay. own game. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll, we'll just call it uh, slightly older than preteen, uh, you know, action adventure sort of mutant uh, amphibious creatures. Yeah, it's super catchy. Yeah, I know. Uh, as, uh, no, I was like, I was trying to come up with an acronym, <laughs> but I can't even remember all those words. Um, no, we're, we're really hoping to make it something special. We're not sure what it'll be yet. Um, but if you have suggestions of things, I certainly would love to hear them. If there's a game that you're like, oh my gosh, this is perfect for the 50th. Absolutely. Uh, let us know. We're always looking for suggestions. Mm -hmm, for sure. 
Also, you'll be getting some bonus content from us uh, on the OneShot Network Secret Archive, uh, which I'm excited about. And uh, those will be coming up soon, hopefully the end of January and then February and beyond. Uh, if you want to get a hold of all the older bonus episodes we have, you can check them out by signing up for the One Shot Network Patreon at patreon.com slash one shot podcast for five dollars and above. It's a really great deal. Uh, and honestly, it goes to supporting some really fantastic shows on the mm-hmm. network. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you that are listening to us are also listening to at least one other show. Uh, on the One Shot Network, so uh, absolutely check it out if you haven't yet. That is it for announcements. Fasten your seatbelts, put your tray tables in the upright position, and get ready to take off with character creation for Trash Mob. I promise that this metaphor will make sense by the end of the episode. (laughs) Enjoy! Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and in this episode, my co-host Amelia and I are excited to welcome Melody, also known as Mother Multiverse from Mother Multiverse Media, to discuss her new game, Trash Bob, an isekai RPG about going from a weak monster to an OP god. Welcome to Character Creation Cast. We're really excited that you are here. Well, thanks. I'm kind of really excited to be here. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's always interesting to see what ends up, uh, you know, coming out of the character creation process and seeing what people come up with and how they approach things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's been a thing that I've I've loved not only about our show but like people coming to us about things and being like, mm-hmm. well, when I did it, it looked like this. And it's like, we can just come up with such a variety of things. It's just so cool. This process mm-hmm. is so much fun. Mm-hmm. So. Do you want to introduce yourself to our audience and to tell everybody what kind of projects you are involved in right now? Oh, um, sure. So, hi, I'm Melody. Um, right now, uh, Trash Mob has just come out as of the previous Sunday. Um, so right now I'm mostly focusing on marketing that, um, in the, and I, I am probably going to do two like Christmas adventures. One will be for trash mob. The other will be for one of my other games, the old ways. Mm. Um, so, you know, horror and anime, almost not quite polar opposites, but pretty (laughs) close. Um, (laughs) And uh, then once it hits January, I'm going to start working on uh, the uh, Trash Mop Advanced Guide or Deluxe Guide. I don't know which I'm going to title it yet, but it's going to have just a whole lot more options. Like it won't have as many rules because the base game is there, but just a lot more that you can uh, do with an already very versatile system. Uh, And then later at some point, I don't even know if it'll be next year because these books take time to put together. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) There will be the season two kind of book for this game, which is called uh, Peaceful Lambs, Deadly Schemes. Since the uh, first portion of the game is about like, okay, this is your, you know, your exciting story, your rise to power when you suddenly, you know, kind of have gained your humanity back and now you've got, you know, all this ability. And then the next part is about how the world reacts to that and how you kind of step up onto the greater stage of the setting. Oh, cool. Very cool. Let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, We will start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? Okay, so um, Trash Mob, uh, the description of it being an isekai game of going from a weak monster to an opaque god. Okay, what does that what does that mean? What does that entail? You know, Mm. so isekai as a genre, for those who don't know, it's a subgenre of anime uh, that essentially means other world. And typically these are stories of people from a modern day ordinary world 
who then through some means or other end up in a fantastical different world than the one they were originally on. And usually they're visited upon by various powers and get cool abilities and become really vital to this world and do a bunch of really crazy, epic, often completely ratchet kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're, they're very much power fantasies. And I think they work as a genre because, well, it's very easy to identify with a character who comes from a world very much like ours. You can understand where they're coming from. And as they discover this new world, you get to discover it with them. So mm. their bewilderment is already your bewilderment. So you're kind of engaged right from the start. And it's really easy to go along with that story. I like that. Mm. And Trash Mob is uh, in that vein, uh, specifically drawing more from um, that time I got reincarnated as a slime and even more on point. So I'm a spider. So what? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a great title. It's so ridiculous um, in that in this game, you you die. And in your next life, you're born as a weak monster in a fantasy world. And then, you know, through your your kind of struggles and survivals, plus some of your knowledge from previous life, you're able to kind of overcome your environment and become some sort of powerful figure in the world, though, mm -hmm. you know, how you react to what you do with that and what your story looks like. All of that becomes extremely variable uh, based on who you were and what kind of world you end up in. Nice. So talking about what kind of world you end up in, it sounds like that's something that you as players get to kind of create. Is there a specific setting or guidelines for a setting for oh, this game? There, there are some central conceits uh, that pretty much always prove true. Let's see if I can get to, uh, to, to my rules, my rules of all the uh, specific <laughs> assumptions of the <laughs> setting, which I had it before. Oh, there we are. So. OK, there's there's only like three big things that have to kind of remain true for this game to work. Uh, one is that it is always a fantastical world. Uh, it is it is bigger than life. Now, that doesn't mean it has to be a fantasy fantasy world. It could be that, you know, powers come from psychic phenomenon or genetic engineering or nanites or whatever. Or, you know, it doesn't matter on that level, but it has to still be just big and beyond and have crazy powers. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the second rule is that there is a video game or RPG like rule set that seems to permeate permeate that world. World. Oh. So um, when it comes to the abilities you have, in many ways, your character sheet isn't isn't 100 percent like a real game artifact, but it's fairly close to what you'd be seeing. Um, so, for instance, the fact that you have a skill, you literally will have some ability to either bring up a menu or have an assessment huh. ability and be able to go like, oh, what am I looking at? I'm looking at a level six monster that has the following abilities. So that's something oh. that's an assumed ability that every character you end up playing has to some degree or other. So you under so you have at least some ability to understand the kind of world you're in. Cool. Um, the that's third interesting. Thing, and, and this might change a little when... Uh, when uh, advanced or deluxe or whatever ended up calling it comes out. But the third thing that is true is there is a typical adventure dungeon and monster relationship. So at least on the surface, the usual assumptions of these are kind of true. Adventurers fight monsters to save others, gain power and gain profit. And not always in that order. Uh, monsters are assumed to be dangerous to humanity, and they often gather under the banner of more powerful monsters, sometimes with plans to destroy human civilization, sometimes not. Uh, and dungeons and other dangerous places are often the homes of these monsters, and adventurers will go into them to achieve various goals. Otherwise, things are very wide open to reinterpret as you wish to do. Okay. I like that. So those are the base setting assumptions. Everything else tends to generate out of play. Like mm -hmm. it, it's one of those things of there's a lot of random generators here and this game is set up. You can play it solo. You can play mm -hmm. it multiplayer with no GM. You just kind of cooperative it. 
mm-hmm. or you can play it as a narrated kind of situation mm-hmm. where somebody's feeding you a story and has things. So like, yeah, that's that's one of the there's there's a lot of versatility to how you want to play it. Mm-hmm. And there's advantages to each of those systems, because obviously if you're playing solo, you get to decide everything. And when you go, that's cool. Well, it's going in the game because you don't have to negotiate it with anybody. Yes. Yeah. On the <laughs> other hand, you know, when you hit a narrated game, well, the advantage of that is, I think, surprise because mm-hmm. you don't know what's going to happen. And not only that, like, there's also that occasional ability for somebody narrating to go, that feels too far out of left field. I'm going to just nudge that in another direction and give mm-hmm. something that's a little more fitting to what's already going on in this narrative. Yeah. Well, and that, like, collaboration of, like, hey, I have this cool thing, and somebody saying, and also, what yeah. if we do this on top of it? And then it becomes, like, this whole thing that's, like, so much bigger than you planned, and right. I just love those moments, too. Right, and that's and that's one of the things I've, I've loved about uh, playing around with this system is that there is a collaborative element if you're playing with multiple people, and mm-hmm. there's random elements, and so sometimes things emerge out of play that you didn't expect but suddenly become part of your setting part of your world mm. as it almost sort of writes itself into existence and it's really fascinating oh, that's we really do love some good random moments. yeah this yeah, is like that, taking two of the, two of the things that we love the most collaborative world building plus random tables you mush them together <laughs> oh you yeah you've made our our day. That's, <laughs> those are our two favorite things. Oh my goodness! So yeah, uh, that's really cool. Uh, I like that a lot. Uh, so uh, we've got random tables. We we'll probably have to roll on those. I'm assuming. Yep. So so what sort of materials then uh, do we need uh, to actually play the game? Um. Okay. So as suggestion it depends on like how you're setting up if you're playing this online my recommendation is have a word file or something open because you're going to be recording your world as you build it you know uh i have a suggested sample format in the book for how to do that if you're playing around a table uh, i'm going to recommend having note cards because as you explore areas it might be easier to just i'm going to write down the name of the area I'm going to write all the exits it has, and I'm going to write down where, how I got here. Like, what mm. was the thing that connected me to this place? And then I can give some fancy text that describes it, so I throw some creative flair onto it. Because, you know, ga- going to safe zone number three, that's boring. But if you go <laughs> to, say, you know, uh, the spawning pit of, you know, the infinite labyrinth, you go, okay, that's more of a place. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know... That Words matter. Zing to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, definitely, there's there's a one of the things I'll stress somewhere in the book is that the aesthetics you want to pursue, you know, stick with the rules, but the aesthetics are yours to reinterpret as you wish. So, when you were all say for the monster Cobalt. What does that mean? It's like, well, if we go back to mythology, it's something completely different than what we have in D&D. And what mm-hmm. D&D has now is completely different than what it had 20, 30 years back. And if you go to uh, what Japan reinterpreted kobolds as, they're like little dog people. Like they're mm-hmm. little wolf people or dog people. It's completely different. And I'm like, okay, so... Which so which one play? of those? <laughs> well... Yep. Which do you like? Which do you want to look like? Because, you know, I'm, I may one day be like, no, I want to be a little dragon person. And another day I'm like, no, I kind of dig the fact that these little, like, you know, wolf guys, like, I'll mm-hmm. do that. I, you know, I want to be fuzzy and cute today. That's, that's where we're going. So, like, aesthetically, you know, pursue what's going to, you know, follow your bliss. What brings you joy? What's going to mm-hmm. make it look like the game you want to play? Very cool. I think I forgot the question we're on. <laughs> No. <laughs> Do we need other specific kinds of dice oh, that this game uses things. or this anything like that? This is die force. It is all die four based. Oh, wow. D force. In- intriguing. Um, okay. Why? Because oh, you wanted people a... to step on them or? No, no, no. This wasn't about Caltrops. Because you were like, Caltrops. That's fun. Oh, I, and now I'm just like, and I'm going to shout out Caltrop Core really quick because apparently <laughs> somebody else decided, oh, I think it was Titano Maki on uh, Twitter, but they decided, hey, a Die 4 system, let's do this, and called it Caltrip Core, and I'm like, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> but, no, uh, for Trash Mob, what I kind of, my initial 
urge was completely instinct based on this. And my thought was, I am making a game about small, weak monsters. I want to use the smallest, most humble mm. of the dice because it doesn't get a lot of credit. And so uh, there's another thing, too, that I figured out along the way of just doing game design stuff is that sometimes people mistake big numbers for epic. Mm -hmm. And instead, what tends to happen is a system becomes so, so unwieldy and so unable to, like, kind of uh, deal with itself that it's like, well, does it feel epic or does it just feel like I, I was a game I was playing and it was like you rolled for damage. And what would happen is, well, one hit would do absolutely nothing and the other would instantly splatter somebody. And there was yeah. almost no in between. And it didn't even matter how tough your character was. And I was like, what's the point of that? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you, you want to have things dialed in. So it's much easier to do big effects in the world with smaller numbers. And so that's some of what my philosophy was on on keeping it a tiny dice with a tiny amount of facts. That's really cool. Uh, plus, you can't stack them. So like if you all oh, if you only have D4s on the table, you want to have players stacking dice getting distracted. <laughs> Can't and stack dice. What do I do? <laughs> My ability to fidget is ruined. I have to play the game. <laughs> oh, don't worry. There's always phones. Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that doesn't mean you can't bring the other dice, Ryan. Although I, I will say, though, if you have a dice roller on your phone, you will not end up stepping on your D4s. So mm. that's fair. That's fair. And that's an advantage. That's an advantage yes. right there. This is why I started buying my children only the blocks of like D6s and I stopped buying them the sets of polyhedrals because they would leave the D4s on the floor. And those are worse than Legos. Yeah. They're awful. They're awful. Mm -hmm. Especially if you've got the metal ones. But then I would like change my son's sheets and stuff and find like he has like the little tiny ones like these. I have them now because I took them away um, and I would find whole piles of D6 in his bed, like under his pillow. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You're like playing Shadowrun in your sleep. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> trying to try to access the Matrix. But yeah, that's that must be it. There you go. <laughs> um, so what kind of stories and themes are you hoping people will work with when they play this game? So there's there's a couple things that I think it lends itself to. Um, one of the things is, is that like when this starts, like, well, one, I've already kind of covered why isekai stories kind of work. You get the perspective of somebody from a modern world, which makes it very easy to understand kind of their perspective, because it's in some ways your perspective to at least a varying extent. Mm -hmm. um, but when you start off small and you start off somewhere else, this is, you know, kind of life starting over from from zero. I think that's actually the name of an anime, but like <laughs> you you end up like, OK, I'm somewhere else. I'm something else. I have lost a good deal of my humanity. And you're getting put into an underdog type story where it's like, OK, this is me versus whatever in my circumstances. And I'm going to try my best on it. So it removes a lot of the like, because sometimes the Sakai stories come off as a bit like you're this invader that's conquering thing. It's a very colonialist, but I feel like mm. in this case, it's like, this isn't something you asked for. This isn't something you tried to make happen. Mm. This is just a situation you're in and you're doing your best to navigate it with what you have. And mm -hmm. so it's a survival story. And I think there's a, a humanity story going on there too. Like what makes us human is some of that background vibe. Like, don't get me wrong. I think that this game can vary from being, very just juvenile like fun times like what do you what yeah. happened like i came back as <laughs> you know um you know cobalt in this dungeon uh i built the biggest weapons i could and i i, I beat a bunch of stuff up and now i'm high level and that's awesome but and, and that will probably happen in your game regardless but it can also be kind of the story of you know in my former life uh you know i was a card player and i gambled all the time and now in this new life I don't even have hands. I can't shuffle a deck of cards. <laughs> How do mm -hmm. I mentally deal with the fact that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not even like a person? And then you run into some adventures, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the ability to talk 
or some other way to communicate, the first thing they may do is try to kill you. And so the first people you see may instantly hate you. Mm. There's a lot of pathos that kind of goes into that. Mm. So when you're playing solo, this can be a very lonely survival story where the sudden triumph of having made the first time you make a socialized role that succeeds and goes, oh, my God, I have a friend. Yeah. Oh, that is so <laughs> relieving. Like it just did, you know, it puts you in a good place. You feel better. Yeah. Like, oh, cool. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be alone forever as some sort of terrible nightmare inside of this, you know, <laughs> maze. Um, and then, you know, past that, the world kind of can shape lots of different ways, depending on what you played before and where you end up. Uh, am I am I good to just throw some examples of games? Yeah, I've done? go for it. Uh, so uh, the first game I did for Solo to kind of play test that was a pixie who ends up in a demon city. Mm. And most of her struggle was that that struggle of being alone because they didn't see humans for a long time. They fought spiders. They fought zombies with psychic powers. Uh, They ended up in an abandoned church and just sleeping there by themselves. It was very sad for a long time. And Mm -hmm. so the final triumph feeling of I've met some people and they made friends with me. And now we're going to go kill this like demon Lord. And then we're going to, we're going to jet like they got out of the city. And that was the story. That was a really, emotional arc i didn't expect it to be quite that deep mm-hmm. of feels um the next game i did was a with this two person no narrator so it was a multiplayer but no okay. planned uh i did it with a friend of mine and we played 80s punks who died in a car crash being chased by the police they wake up inside the blasted wreck of the car out in a desert and they're both gremlins Oh. And so they go around and they they fight some skeletons. Every human who sees them tries to murder them for a very long time. <laughs> uh, they eventually manage to make friends with like some people down in these crypts they get into. But uh, in this barren wasteland and like uh, it, it was kind of the whole thing of when they finally met other gremlins, those gremlins, uh, you know, rolled up the personality on them. They were all 100% irredeemable sociopaths. Oh, wow. So they like were hurting people and doing stuff. And so they ended up killing the only things that looked like them that they'd met. And they went, oh, God, like, what are we? Yeah. We are. Is this like a punishment? Are we these monsters because of who we were in our past life? And yeah. So, oh, yeah. So once again, getting into this, like, you know, it's this cute little game and it can be just fun, <laughs> but you can get these really deep stories. Yeah. Uh, eventually, we started kind of figuring out the background of the world was that uh, Gremlins had been the downfall of the previous civilization. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So like this whole place, this barren waste was a testing ground for the adventures and they sent them there to go wipe out gremlins so that the new civilization overseas would never fall. And it just happens that these two have been, you know, slowly leveling in the in the setting secret that we'd eventually get to is that uh, the ultimate gremlin, the one who's gotten all the cool abilities and makes civilization fall, is called the anarchy gremlin. Yeah. <laughs> Also, they were going to repair that car like that was going to be a thing. We didn't get to that part, but that was going to happen. No, I love when games can do that, though, when you have the ability to kind of shift between like really kind of like fun, silly, like, you know, like, oh, we're gremlins. And like, that's kind of a weird, silly thing. But then like these really deep, like, okay, but why am I a gremlin? What does that mean to be a gremlin? And like not a human anymore. And like, I like when we have the ability to tell those really like deep stories kind of within these silly mm-hmm. yeah. settings. Cause it sort of like, I don't know. I feel like it gives you a little more room to explore those things than if you just like sat down with your therapist and were like, okay, let's talk about feelings now. <laughs> right. You know, it's like, it's a very different way to, to talk about those things, but to still kind of work out some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Not that you shouldn't go to therapy and just play RPGs, but RPGs can be therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely and so like as far as stories i go they're definitely stories that that are about humanity what it is to be human what it is mm-hmm. to be a monster and how that shakes out 
And sometimes how that shakes out is I'm going to play a really shallow game about me becoming really, really powerful, beating up everyone who <laughs> tries to stop me and going, mm. yeah. Aha, I'm going to go do the thing I really wanted to do. I think my third, third game was just about a, a woman who died in a shark attack. She was a chef. And she was like, I hope I'm the one doing the eating in the next life. And she becomes this newt. And by the end, her like title is World Eater Newt. <laughs> <laughs> and just like destroys everything she comes across. But when she finally finds this like dwarven civilization, the only thing she really wants to do is like settle down and start her own like little like food stand and, oh. <laughs> and, live there. and that was it. That was her story. Oh, so, that's like, amazing. Yeah. You do you. Yep. You do what exactly. makes you happy. Like, you what, know? Makes, what makes sense for the character and is yeah. fun and doesn't mm-hmm. disrupt other people's fun. That's the good stuff. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's where it's at, right there. Absolutely. <laughs> the sweet spot. <laughs> yeah, it, it does sound like we covered our next question of what do characters actually do in this game uh, mm-hmm. pretty well there. Uh, there's a, there's pretty much... Pretty a, much whatever you want. Whatever you want, yeah. A little yeah. bit, yeah. Uh, which is it's cool. But, uh, but I love that survival aspect. You were talking about, like, you know, being a solo and doing this oh, and yeah. having that that alone feeling. I I, I think doing it... Two players, one narrator uh, would would kind of enhance that as well a little bit um, oh, in imagine. some cases, which would be such a wild thing. Um, gosh. Yeah. Um, what do you think makes this game unique? I mean, there are a number of, you know, kind of like anime style games. There are a yeah. number of, you know, like you're the monster now kind of game. like what makes this different than some of the other games you've seen or honestly a different way to phrase that question of like why did you feel that this game needed to be made like why was this um, a game that you wanted the, to see in the world the, the deep-seated truth <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> so i watched i watched so i'm spider so what and uh that story is very much uh this this girl's teenage girl her whole class gets uh destroyed in like a explosion and we we're playing this like really fun, almost Tim Burton-esque music as she hatches out of this egg and she starts freaking out, looking around like, oh, God, there's spiders everywhere. Like, mm-hmm. and then, ah, oh, I have eight legs. Ah, oh, why is this happening? And, you know, but she manages to maintain this like, like she's hilarious. Like the character is really funny. And mm-hmm. she manages to have like kind of a good attitude, very upbeat, like, OK, this is my life now. Well, I guess I'll you know, start webs. I'm going to learn how to fight. I'm going to learn how to hunt. I'm going to get away <laughs> from all my siblings because they're all cannibalizing each other. Um, you know, and watching her story of struggling in this dungeon environment alone, having bad things happen to her. Like I said, just all that empathy pathos thing. Mm-hmm. And then watching as she keeps getting stronger and starts to overcome these issues. And eventually like, you know, it's this whole thing of like, you're getting a simultaneous peek into the future mm-hmm. uh, where you find out all of her classmates have also reincarnated, which was really fun. Most of them mm-hmm. got to be humans and nobles and really oh, good interesting. stuff. But the thing is, is they started off as like babies and she's been going since she was like basically like zero years old. So she's immensely powerful. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, one of the, you know, by the end, uh, she has like half a human body going. She's kind of turned into a drier. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> yeah. And so like and she's working her way up, you know, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> Cl- like climbing, you the, climbing the corporate ladder of uh, <laughs> monstrosities. Of ladder humanity, of monstrosities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you know, it's it's one of those things of watching that journey and, you know, her struggling her way through. It just is really easy to kind of jump on empathize and i was like this is such a cool way to do a story because i love uh that time i got reincarnated as a slime with if anybody watches one of the first bits is just them figuring out they're not human going i have no limbs i'm a round ball and i can't see and Mm -hmm. i remember thinking that was one of the most fascinating parts of the story but very quickly they become really op really fast like it's kind of montages their way out of the dungeon um (laughs) and i i really enjoyed the struggle of the other story because i'm like no they really fought their way up they were not just gifted everything it was no they have been 
working their butt off to survive in a really harsh world. Mm. And, you know, just just through grit, determination and cleverness, she she manages. So, like, you know, it's easy to cheer on a character who's gone from so far underdog to the heights of power that they've gotten to. And I was just like and seeing those kind of stories, I'm like, you know, I think other people will want to have this experience of going. Mm-hmm. I started over in another world because I, I, I will say now I was going to say at some point, you know, hey, hey out there, if you're going to play trash mob and you're soloing and you decide to do a self insert, no one can really judge you because no one has to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the game you want to do. That's fine. So you don't um, come into their house and like judge the game that they're playing. Oh, oh, oh yes, it's, it's so sorry. you know it's not real Everyone, role play if you're playing. Melanie can insert. see what you're doing <laughs> with the game. And <laughs> no, I mean I, my psychic powers are not that strong. But um, I mean, honestly, if I had psychic powers, I'm going to be honest, y'all. Like that's not what I would do with them. No. I'm sure that all what all of you are doing is extremely interesting <laughs> but i <laughs> no <laughs> like if i had that power that's not how i would use it <laughs> but yeah i thought i thought people would enjoy doing a, a, a game where you get to go from almost nothing to suddenly being like yeah. a power that could change the world that's a fun mm-hmm. work to do yeah absolutely there's mm-hmm. something really satisfying about that especially i think um you know, in in times like these where we often feel really powerless, you know, I mm-hmm. think that there's so many of us right now that are just feeling like th- things are happening in the world. And no matter how hard we try and are doing these things, it just feels kind of out of control. And so I think there is something really satisfying and validating about being able to be in a game where you're like... I'm on top now, (laughs) like, you know, to be the one that's really in charge of things and to really have that growth and to have, you know, all of that work actually come to something because sometimes it's not like that right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Um, Well, this is the part we talk about the history of the game, but I think we we pretty much covered all of that. Uh, Is there anything else about the history that you want to throw out there? Um. I mean, I might say, like, I started it in February and I thought this game was going to be small. But every time I was like, OK, cool, I'm going to make a little 16 page, 20 page game. Put this yeah. out because that's a lot of what I did. And every time I got to that point, it was like, huh, it needs a little something more here. Uh, listeners. Uh, Ryan, uh, do you want to talk there. about that feeling? <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, right. Exactly. Goodness gracious. Uh, yeah. Trash Mab 159 pages right now, yeah. um, which is uh, it's not a small endeavor to create something like that that's for sure new <laughs> yeah <laughs> like this is the biggest book what's I've more made. with feeling <laughs> i was like yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. yeah exactly uh and, and goodness um i i have i i've got that same experience of you you go to create a small little thing and it's like well wait uh, we need to talk about this oh wait we need to talk about this wait we need rules for this because this is mm-hmm. going to come oh goodness and, and then before you know it, you've got 50 plus pages for something that you thought was going to be like 12. Yep. And it's a small game. <laughs> small game. I'm going to make a one page game, 105 pages. It's a small game about small <laughs> monsters, but uh, it's not that But small. they get bigger and then the book got bigger. And mm-hmm. then... <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right. But, I and mean, then you're going to make another book for when they get really big. Mm-hmm. And then... Yep, right. <laughs> But you do have a lot going on here. I mean, you've got uh, three different ways to play the game. You've mm-hmm. got, uh, you know, all sorts of different things going on. Uh, so I, I'm excited to, to learn more about this because uh, there's a lot of uh, fun stuff, it sounds like, going on here. And um, I, I want to get to it. Yeah. Uh, but before we do, there, there might be some basic terms and concepts we need to cover. Uh, probably. Let's see. Um, what are some basic terms? So, uh... I think the main term is just realizing that uh, the term skill in this game is specifically the name for the powers and abilities you get. And your character, there are a few other traits you get as you go, but skills make up the bulk of how your character works. So, you know, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead, I guess, and give an example. Like if you play a vermin mob... One of your base skills is sneak. You gain mm. the ability to sneak around and get past things. 
Uh, and then, you know, if it goes further down to, let's say, slime, that's a pretty popular choice. Uh, slimes and aberrations. Uh, the next two skills you get are acid attack and resist bashing damage, mm. which I mean, resist bashing damage. I'm pretty sure you can imagine what it does. Acid attack is pretty straightforward as well. Yeah. And so those couple skills coming together will pretty much make up the bulk of your character. And then you have a like occupation, like job class occupation kind of deal mm-hmm. and your level uh, levels. I think people are pretty familiar with. Um Levels in this go like one to uh, 99 or 100. I can't remember which just because that fits much more with the uh, kind of like video game RPG kind of aspect for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like big numbers. There's something satisfying about it. I mean, you talked about that a little bit before Mm -hmm. with like the dice and stuff. But, you know, as far as levels, it's like it's fun to be like I'm level 48 rather than I'm like level four. Like Mm -hmm. it just isn't, you know, even if it's the same amount of like power and stuff, Mm -hmm. sometimes it's fun to just be like. Level mm-hmm. 400. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> it's over 9,000. <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely something like, you know, the, the skills will level up in uh, tiers. There's tiers. That's also, mm-hmm. I guess, an important thing. So most skills start off at the basic tier. You don't put the word basic in because you, you know where it starts. But then you mm-hmm. move from basic to improved, improved to greater, greater to master, and then master to ultimate. And at each of those tiers, those skills will jump up a great deal in kind of what they're capable of, what they do, how they work, nice. etc. So, yeah, not only do you get the the satisfaction of, ooh, I'm level, you know, really high, but you also have the like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not throwing acid attacks anymore. Like, you know, peasant, I have an ultimate <laughs> acid attack. It's like, what does that mean? It means somebody's getting hurt when you hit them with this. Yeah. It's going to get hard. Um, yeah, so that's that's part of uh, how that works. And then uh, as far as the skills go, they are organized into several types. Mm-hmm. Uh, when playing the game, these types will matter. Character creation is probably, well, I mean, it matters because you're making choices, right? Yeah. Um, So you have attack skills, uh, you have defense skills, you have boost skills and you have movement skills. Uh, If you look on the right hand side at the top of each pages, there's a little kind of lexicon almost going like little symbols going. So you can see the attack symbol, the defense symbol, uh, the boost signal or mm-hmm. symbol and the uh, movement symbol at the top. And so when you later go to the skills chapter and look at them, all the skills are set up like cards so that if you want to, rather than re- try to record on your sheet and have to look them up every time, you can print them out and they're built so that you can record what level they are, what mm-hmm. tier level they are, and know exactly what they do. So if you want to make your character into basically like a deck of cards that you can quickly shuffle through and go, okay, these are the things I need to use. Mm-hmm. That is totally viable. Cool. Yeah, that's very cool. All right. Um, anything else before we get into uh, character creation that we need to know? Um, I, I think if there is, we'll, we'll discuss it as we go and it'll all make sense. Yeah. Character all creation right. is fairly simple. Like this is going to probably be the shortest part of things. Um, so. No, because uh, we take a long time to make decisions. <laughs> well, so. OK. But, <laughs> I, I will say, that, well, that's fair. OK. Don't well, worry. We'll we can make all. it complicated. We'll oh, find ways. All right. I believe in you. So. <laughs> well, uh, it sounds like we're ready to, to make some people. So shall we make some people? Yes. Let's, let's make, make some people. Let's make some people. Let's make some people. All right. So, so what do we need to do first? Okay. Um, sure. Um, first thing we kind of need to do here is uh, we got to figure out who we were in the real world. Mm. Now, um, as as far as like kind of a starter idea, um, when you're when you're playing with a group versus solo, obviously you have some different considerations because uh, you could have all completely unique origins. But I find doing a group origin is just much easier. It puts you kind of on the same page. Yeah, and it gives you some reasons to kind of know each other, mm-hmm. and that 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 just makes it narratively much easier. That when like all this chaos goes down, you end up in this new place. You're immediately on the working. Together 
together level versus okay, how do we contrive a way they all get together? Mm-hmm. Nope, yeah. nope. We're we're all we're all gonna get hit by is it are they uh, what was this is the term truck coon together? Um, <laughs> pretty common isekai joke um <laughs> isekai joke but uh what i was thinking uh what i think we we may have planned out a little bit ahead of time just so we're not getting too caught in the weeds here is that we're all gonna be people going to an anime convention yeah we're on a plane together and yep. then the plane goes down and then uh when we wake up <laughs> Uh, we are not who we were and we're somewhere completely different. And we're not going to yeah. know that part until we get to the end of it. So right now, what we, what we need to do is just come up with those people and mm-hmm. uh, what they're like and maybe come up with a little bit of, of who they are to each other. Um, and, you know, I, I, obviously I'm thinking anime type fans. Do either of you have any strong uh, thoughts on this so far? I mean, so, like, generally, as a person, I am not an anime fan. So okay. I need people to, like, explain this. Because, like, if it's not, like, Yu-Gi-Oh!, I don't really... I love... I mean, freaking but, love Yu-Gi-Oh! But that's but a way to, like... outside of that. <laughs> well, but that's, that's, like, a potential, like, hook, is you could be somebody who is, like, not really all that into the anime scene... But mm-hmm. maybe you're a card gamer or maybe you're a video game person. Good, I think a card, card game person game. would be actually really cool as a, as a starter because it's a little different interest area, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yes. But like, oh, yeah. there's, a, there's enough of that overlap to go to the same convention. Right. 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 It's called Gen Con. And you know, so. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, especially if they're like a pro gamer type person, you know, like somebody exactly. who actually can compete on the on the on circuit. On a stuff. high level. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. makes them pretty interesting. Yeah. I would love to be, uh, a, let's say, world's foremost Yu-Gi-Oh player. Yeah. No, oh, that there you go. Good. That sounds like a good start. <laughs> because if I'm going to play a game, I'm going to be good at it. Yeah. And uh, the one that believes in the heart of the cards the most. It's uh, true. In it's the whole true. world. <laughs> it's true. Oh, no, I think that sounds fun. All right, so I really love you. Guys. So for so your, uh, your like uh, job class, you could put you know professional card game person or best Yu Gi Oh player yeah. in the world if you want. Whatever, whatever you feel is a, is a good way to put it. That can yeah. be however. I mean, you like want I have be. all the sponsorships. Oh yeah. I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear. Like I think even Mountain Dew, maybe. Sounds maybe I'm that good. I'm like Mountain Dew level. <laughs> Mountain Dew level. <laughs> Mountain Dew level. Pep <laughs> card gamer. I just want to be really clear to people that I do actually really love these games and I have like played in tournaments. And so like I'm not making okay. fun of you. I do really like these things. And like so to everyone listening, I promise this is set with love. Okay. Um, and then obviously you'll need a you'll need some kind of name for your character. It's not the most important thing in the world, but you know, it's not a bad idea to have a name. Hmm. Gotta think of a good last name for my character. Um I wanted to I wanted to be like um uh, also famous, but like in a like act, actual celebrity, maybe like a singer. A type singer Ooh, that, okay. uh, that okay. loves going to cosplay conventions. Okay. Yeah. So you like incognito, like you're like a famous singer, but you're like wearing yeah. a costume so nobody knows yeah, yeah, who yeah. you are kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. That's... Uh, but like, you know, it's it's one of those like uh, if if you're in the know, like if you follow all the right accounts, you'll you'll yeah, figure like it one out. of those people that like does it and like leaves clues that like yeah. they'll be at the conventions or whatever, and then like leaves clues about who they are mm-hmm. there, and like I love those people. It was like um, what's his name, Brian Cranston, uh, cosplayed as Walter White um, mm-hmm. at a convention. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. I mean, he also went on like one of the late night shows dressed as a Power Ranger too, though. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's very good. It's very good. Nah, that's super fun. Uh, What's a good name? Names are are, hard. Names are very hard. Let's you can always just use a random generator if you need to. I mean I know. It's usually I usually have my books in here. And I mean to be fair, this is the kind of genre if you have a very on the nose name that is Mm -hmm. completely acceptable. Honestly, hearing your uh, character concept on uh, it being like a, a singer who's famous, I'm almost think I mm. wanted to play. I was thinking maybe playing a character that was kind of fighty. Um, um, 
That's, that's interesting. Uh, I, I'm going with uh, Felicia Starfire. Oh, for yeah. her name. oh my god! Uh, which amazing. sounds like a really like bold uh, sort of performer uh, that has that like feisty attitude, right? Yeah. No. I. I yeah. No. That sounds great. Uh, I, but but once you mentioned that, I was thinking earlier you'd mentioned. Uh, you know, necromancer and uh, magical girl as some of the vibes, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, what What could I do that isn't either of those? And I was like, I could be fighty. Fighty sounds good. And so mm-hmm. the idea of maybe you're doing this and I could be your bodyguard, Ooh. who's also Ooh. like in a like disguise kind of thing, like, okay, I don't yeah, want anyone like to that. know. So they're, they're dressed up and maybe they look completely ridiculous, you know, whatever mm-hmm. they're dressed up as. And then yeah. I'm going to be honest, I will entirely... If depending on what comes out in the next part of character creation, I may entirely retcon their costume to match whatever they turned into <laughs> because yeah, those kind of details are fun. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm thinking they're going to be a bodyguard. I, I like sure the thought that uh, like the three yet. of us were sitting next to each other on the plane. Oh, yeah. No. It's, it's, it's so good. there was like plenty of time for like conversation before, mm-hmm. you know, things went down literally. Mm. Mm. Not a name. Wow, the names are hard. Um, I know, I'm trying to, like, look up, like, good Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I can, like, be named after. Because <laughs> I put too much thought into this, even though this is for a podcast and no one cares long term. Like, what's a good... Wait a minute. I was reincarnated as a blue-eyes white dragon. Okay, my name's going to be completely ridiculous. Um, I had a friend who did some MMA, uh, and her... Her MMA name was the Honey Badger. Oh, uh, nice. So I think for this character who will be very fighty, uh, her name is going to be Honey Barrington. Oh, yes. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yep. I don't know what her cosplay is yet. Like I said, we'll get to that in a minute. So once we've all got our name and our kind of occupation, we'll probably move on to the next uh, portions a little bit. All right. Professional singer. Perfect. Now, um, we all we all named up, or are we? Yep. I uh, no, but that's that's okay. I'll, okay. I'll think on it. And we'll, <laughs> we'll get there. It's, this, it's always the we'll last thing I do. Post. I just can't. No, that's yeah. fine. It, this does not have to happen in order because we're. This is the before you play the game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, know, you build it out in a way that makes it uh work for you. Absolutely. So, Okay, so from here, where I'm going to roll one of the first dice. There is a how you died chart. Ooh. And it's not so much the means of how you died. Like, we're already on the plane. We know it's going down. But this is more the context of why this happened. Because in some cases, uh, like how that happens, I feel like really flavors things. So mm. someone who dies in a freak accident, it being one of those, oh, you died before your time, you're going to get reincarnated is very different from, oh, you lived a terrible life. And while this place feels like hell, it's supposed to be. This is your punishment. Like this is your penance. That's a very different vibe, right? So I'm going to roll a die for and see what it suggests and see if we can kind of work that as part of like what's going on with our characters. Does that sound I like that? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Mm-hmm. It was so, that random. I rolled number one, and this says dying for the sake of others. Uh, we Ooh. do some kind of good deed, and our actions uh, save some people. So, <gasps> hmm, with a with a with a plane going down, I I am almost imagining this is, gets into some over the top action movie kind of nonsense, almost mm. right. Um. What if the case is there was like a storm and it's one of those things of like, you know, um, or maybe the the pilot has an accident and essentially or I mean, we could we could even do the terrorist plane attack. It, it really wide open. Anybody got any inspiration on this one? I, I like the thought of uh, there's a storm mm-hmm. and, you know, the plane gets hit um, and the 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 pilots uh get taken out um and we just happen to be in the right place mm-hmm. to to get to the front because we know we're going to go over like a population center right. um so if we don't get this plane under control at least a little bit 
um, we're we're, we're gonna, gonna go city. over. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna hit a city or something. I like that idea too. I think yeah. that's I think that's solid. So we managed to to steer things out of the way, and uh, you know this this becomes our fiery fiery gate into another world. <laughs> I I like I like the thought of uh like uh as as we're about to to hit mm-hmm. um I like you know take off my 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 hel- helmet or whatever I'm wearing on uh-huh. top right and then like easily recognizable as superstar um <laughs> with like the perfect hair like there's a moment of like take yeah. the helmet off like shake out the hair and there's like a little like <laughs> oh gosh I'm sorry I'm now seeing like the anime scene where you do that and someone's like this is <gasps> pop star says the complete name like just the normal kind of reaction and then their jaw doesn't uh-huh. work correctly for a bit um yeah, no. It's Felicia I, I, Starfire. I, yeah, Felicia Starfire. Um, <laughs> we got to do something. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that sounds good. Oh, um, amazing. Awesome. Okay. Is that is that enough of the idea? Are there any other? Yeah, I, I think that? I think that works out really okay. well. Um, yeah. So we 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 saved uh, we saved a, a populated uh, city uh, at the expense of ourselves. Mm-hmm. No, that's that sounds pretty good. Like, yeah, I mean, we were we were going down. We didn't have to do that, but we decided to do the right thing. And uh, and then we're going to end up in this other world. So um, the next part is we're going to get our forms of this is part two, page 27, who you are now. Oh, I was so excited. And uh, this part's really easy in some ways. Now, I, I have a section there that says, thanks, I hate it. Can I reroll? The answer is obviously yes. Like, there are some things that you're just like, I never want to play X ever. Don't Mm -hmm. make me game. And it's like, listen, you have free will. Yeah. Like, re-roll it. It's okay. (laughs) This is meant to be fun. Yeah. Re-roll if you need to. I mean, there's there's a lot of people that have, uh, you know, phobias of specific types of creatures and stuff. And and if you're going to be or or even somebody else in the party uh, if, and if also there's a level of just like it's a game yeah, yeah. Have, fun. have fun and if that doesn't feel like a thing that's going to be fun for you then don't do that and like Absolutely. there's replay value to this game i've played it a lot uh designing it involved a lot of play testing and oh, i yeah. hate saying there's some things i've already played that i'm like you know maybe it's something today. new maybe something different i want to mm-hmm. i want to try a different route absolutely so all right so to do this we have the your new form chart and we simply roll 1d4, and that will decide your uh, your base type, which will be either vermin, domestic animal, undead, or small humanoid. Oh, I'm and so happy the, about this. Uh, the second dice will determine what the, the subtype of that is going to be. Oh, so, I uh, hope you get a how three, about we Amelia. All roll, and then we'll all say what we got, and it'll, yeah. it'll be kind of a fun reveal. So I've got my, uh, my metallic d4. Oh, actual, I was just going to say trap. that, like, we sh- I wanted to tell you what dice I'm using because I'm using these ones um, that look like bones. Oh, I love it. So I just wanted everybody yeah, to no, know. I've got my, my, my signature blue-green uh, love it, color love it. combo in metal. It's pretty. Uh, and, and really, it hurts shaking this dice in my hand because the points are so, so sharp. <laughs> I'm going to come through with wound. this recording to my... Oh, what did I get? I got a two. I got a one, which is vermin. Okay. I got domestic. I also animal. have vermin. <gasps> okay, so now we roll again, right, to find what yep. we get under that category. Oh my Correct. god, I really hope I'm a spider. Please, please, please. Ah. Oh boy. Reptile. Fine. Oh, <gasps> snake on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got domestic animal, food animal. Domestic animal, food animal. So mm-hmm. now you'll notice that these types, while they kind of give you a suggestion, you can definitely play with yeah. what that form is. And so after we get this initial roll, we have one more thing we need to do for our form, which is we get to pick one more skill. Mm. Now, uh, typically... This is this gets into kind of how you want to start your game and what's going on. If you want to play a more high power game, you could pick more than one skill or start picking from the more specialized skills you'll find in mystery skills. 
And if you want to go completely OP, you can start with the crown skills and apex. But in this particular case, uh, I think just to keep things simple, we should probably pick from one of the powers on the new form chart. Mm-hmm. And what you'll find is kind of useful there is that can either define more some sort of ability you get from your occupation. Like as a bodyguard, it might be really funny uh, for me to get muscle because I am a rodent vermin. And so being like a mouse that just like has super strength for no reason sounds hysterical to me. Yeah. Um, I might do that. I'm not saying I will. I'm just thinking <laughs> I might. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, uh, you could also well, I mean, and then it could also be to like further define what kind of critter uh, in specific you're playing instead of just like an occupation ability thing like. If you're playing a bug vermin, for instance, and you've got, okay, poison attack, vertical movement, sneak, um, you might be playing something like a beetle and you're like, okay, I want to be really tough. Maybe I will take um, resist bashing Mm. or, you know, some other power that really works for giving me that ability, right? To to kind of further define the creature you're playing. Um, Okay. Yeah, so hmm. So I'm sorry, I was trying to write stuff down. What what are we doing now at this point? What, so what once, am I looking so at? We've got, so the, <laughs> the form chart should give the initial skills. Mm-hmm. Uh if you've got those down. Okay. Um this is about you get one pick of an extra oh. skill you can get. Okay. Oh, cool. So since I rolled so that, domestic animal, uh-huh. I get charm for that. Yep, you get and charm. Since I rolled food animal i get both metabolize and scavenger slash grazer yep that's sort of so that you can uh choose kind of like so so scavenger grazer is going to help during the survival stuff uh if you when you get to the survival portion portion yeah. because like a scavenger is better able to find uh animal resources a grazer is better able to find plant resources and uh and it just and they both just help with uh survival rule roles um, okay metabolize on the other hand as long as you've eaten it gives you extra health levels Hmm. and so it makes you tougher in general and so while those start small it's like okay these are small things you get for the food animal later they can be very like you know like okay i have like five extra health levels it doesn't matter what this is i'm probably going to win the fight as long as uh Mm -hmm. as long as i don't get like knocked down too far absolutely Um, yeah, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do for my fourth pick yet, but I've I've got some thoughts. Yeah, I'm trying to... There's, like, a lot of good choices here. There really mm-hmm. are. And and if you see something, you go, oh, that sounds cool, ask me what it does, and I'll tell you. Um, awesome. Because there's a lot of abilities. So you, you're playing a uh, reptile? Yeah, I'm going to be a snake. <laughs> okay, you're a snake. So you got sneak, quick, and regenerate. Regenerate's mm-hmm. obvious what it does. Every turn, uh, you get to roll a dice, and uh, if it comes up a four, you get a health level back. And as it gets higher levels, you get more of those dice to roll. Um, and then quick, uh, you roll a dice, and if it comes up a four, you get an extra turn. So that's pretty powerful. Um, mm-hmm. And sneak, obviously, is, well, it gives you the ability to uh, sneak around. Uh, it gives you bonus dice for advantage, which is uh, kind of like uh, initiative in most games. I think I kind of want to just take poison attack. Yeah. Too, because I just feel like logical. it makes sense. Yeah, you know? totally makes sense. I mean, sense. sometimes it's fun to do the thing that doesn't make sense and just sounds silly, but I, you know, I think poison attack sounds mm-hmm. cool. No, that's really good. It does sound really good. I'm trying to figure out what sort of animal I want to be, though. Yeah, that definitely can, because like part of me is like I could take vertical movement and play a bat instead of Mm -hmm. just being like a ground rodent but i'm not sure that's where i want to go right now like i'm not sure that's the uh the thing i really want to get into and i'm also like looking at all the the odd abilities that come in later and i'm like oh man there's a i think you should be some kind of of like horrible australian monstrosity like (laughs) you know Everything in Australia can kill you. This is true. Everything in Australia is very deadly. Hmm. You know? Hmm. I, I almost want to... Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. I, I see... Oh, boy. Where's this I, going? <laughs> okay, I, found, I found the skill Horde Tactics. Mm-hmm. Uh, you oh, become yeah. an expert in fighting in and against groups. Yep. Uh, knowing which ways in which they move and coordinate. 
Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about taking that and being a goose. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. Just so you yes. know. Yes. There was there was one of our play one of the play test games uh was uh two of us got food animal. One of us a, was a goose and the other was a goat. And I didn't realize we had both like uh was it like Untitled Goose Game and Goat Simulator in the same game. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that could have been so much chaos. But uh-huh. yeah, it was short lived, but I was still very much enjoyed it. So goose, super yeah. viable. Have to be a goose at this point. And I'm taking horde tactics as my uh, my fourth skill. Sounds good. Hmm. And there I am, like being all picky about what I get. And I'm like, oh, oh, I'm I'm, I'm the one who invented this game. Shouldn't I know right off the <laughs> Oh, that I just wanted it? to make a snake on a plane joke. Oh, really? no, it's, I mean, <laughs> that's fine. That's perfectly fair. Um, huh. Gosh, there are so many good things I could get. But I'm thinking I'm not going to take muscle because as much as like muscle mouse is like kind of great. Uh, I'm just I'm not sure I'm quite feeling that uh i think i'm gonna take hmm i think i'll take uh hit and run it's a pretty good boost ability that'll make it so i can do like fast attacks and uh you know eventually use fast weapons although it might be better for me to take ambush right off the right off the rip so i can just uh get surprise attacks on people and and do a lot of damage that way decisions decisions i think maybe i'll just i think i'll go with the simpler instinct i'm gonna take muscle and we'll see how that goes because being a super strong rodent is pretty funny that is pretty funny i like that a lot so skills got my sneak and my disease attack and speed which is good and then muscle so that's gonna be a pretty I didn't hit pretty hard as a character. I'll say that ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Call to watch action. Yeah, like that. I really like the simplicity of character creation in this game. Uh, it, it actually went really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really cool seeing a, a game that was just D4s. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, I... I, I didn't think it was something that was feasible, but apparently it is, and and it actually works. And I was like, oh, that's pretty sweet. Uh, but you know, before we uh, we let you all go for the week, we have uh, just a couple calls to action. First up, definitely check out the One Shot Network Patreon at patreon.com slash one shot podcast because network overlord James D'Amato is about to have a baby with his partner Mel. Um, and who wouldn't want to support that amazing family and, know. you know, ne- network babies? <laughs> Gotta got support the network babies. Yeah, it's, a, it's an important cause, network mm-hmm. You too can support a network baby. <laughs> For as little as $1 a month. Yeah. <laughs> you too can support network babies. <laughs> uh, plus, you get some amazing bonus content from other shows on the network, along with our show. And that's just a win-win all around, honestly. That sounds like a good time all around, so why yeah. not? Yeah, absolutely. Um, another way to have a good time all around is to leave us a rating and review uh, through services like Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, etc. Um, and now you can actually even rate us on Spotify. So if you are listening to us through Spotify, welcome. Uh, also, you can go and rate us and that'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, it always makes us feel amazing seeing every review, uh, and we'll actually be reading the five-star reviews right here. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have any new reviews to read at the moment. I'm sure everybody's been busy with the holidays, uh, but now that all those holidays are over, if you have some time, go out there and leave us a review, and we'll read it right here and give you some thanks. And Really, it would just make our, our year amazing to start off that way. 
Yeah, it would. We love them. I, mm-hmm. You know, we say that every time. We love reading them. We love getting them. It does It does really make us happy. Um, we're not just saying that for the recording. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> it really does matter. We even say that when we're not recording. I know. We do. <laughs> uh, that is it for this week. You can join us next week as we dive further into character creation and even break our format a bit. Until then, please stay safe, drink water, get vaccinated, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we got to read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows, like Neoscum. Neoscum is a narrative comedy podcast featuring five Chicago improvisers antagonizing their way through the role-playing classic Shadowrun. It follows a group of misfits and outsiders, Z, the acerbic cyber troublemaker, Pox, the candy junkie klepto from across the pond, Tech Wizard, the public access actor with a petulant thirst for adventure, and Dak Rambo, the nastiest trucker this side of the Robo Mason Dixon. Join the irascible Neo Scum crew on a puerile rockin' road trip through a weirdo world of tomorrow, doling out street justice to every deeb they encounter, whether they deserve it or not.